Jordan trying to shake off Starks. Oh, what a move! Oh, LeBron James with no regard for human life! Final seconds. Bryant for the win. Bang! Iverson against Gill. The crowd on its feet. Allen for the win! Welcome to the Sneaker History Podcast. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Sneaker History Podcast. Of course, I am your host, Mike, and I am with a great individual out here, guys. His name is Fonz, uh, and I really wanted to bring him on today because he has an awesome project uh, with his company, Token Proof and Adidas. So you guys know we're all about the sneakers here, and this is a great kind of inner, I guess, junction between two different worlds of the NFT world, which has been huge over the past few years, and of course, brands we know and love like Adidas. So, Fonz, I want to let you kind of take the reins for a second, man. Let's tell the people who you are and, you know, we appreciate you being on today. Mike, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Uh, So, yeah, I'm Fonz, originally from Mexico City, Uh, been in technology all my life, and I am now the CEO and founder of uh, Token Proof, uh, which is in the NFT and Web3 space. But like I said, I've been in technology my whole life. I'm a refugee of the oil and gas industry where I spent 12 years uh, in Houston. So I moved to the States when I was 15 um, to Houston, Texas. And so I naturally uh, fell into the oil and gas industry after graduating from college and uh, spent quite a bit of time there building software um, and then went on to to other adventures that led me to uh, building Token Proof today. Nice. So, you know what? I had to stop you there because I, I'm in Houston now. So that's where I live. Oh, nice. Yeah. I was like, wait a minute. Yes, sir. So where are you at now? Are you in the East Coast? Oh, I'm sorry. West Coast now, right? No, I'm in Austin. I moved to Austin oh. during the pandemic. Awesome. So not okay. too far away. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, hey, that's pretty cool. I didn't realize you were still in Texas. That's that's pretty awesome, man. And uh, I guess when you were in the um, oil and gas and how did you find yourself getting introduced into the world of like NFTs, those tokens? Uh, I know they got really kind of big you know, during COVID and kind of, you know, after that, but how did you find yourself creating token proof and becoming a part of that world? Yeah. So there's a a middle, there's an adventure in the middle between my oil oil and gas days and my NFT days. Mm -hmm. And so um, the, the story is that I built a startup in oil and gas, sold it to a public oil field services company, worked for those guys for three years. And then I was bored out of my mind um, when the pandemic happened and I was still working for those guys. And um, I uh, became involved with my uncle uh, who used to work at Microsoft during the 90s. So he was part of essentially the team that built Microsoft Windows, Windows 95, Windows 98. And at the start of the pandemic, he got his ex-Microsoft crew back together uh, because they realized that eventually there was going to be a COVID vaccine Mm -hmm. and that the world was probably going to require us to prove that we didn't have COVID in order to board an airplane or go to a concert or go to a stadium. And they thought that it would be better if uh, if, if we had something that was more reliable than your handwritten uh, vaccine card. And they thought that uh, something having to do with QR codes and cryptography would be a potential solution. And I didn't really quite understand it at the time, but uh, I was excited to be in that group somehow. And so I asked Mm -hmm. him um, if he could include me. I said, Dude, I'll be the janitor. I'll be. I'll bring you guys coffee. I'm not even asking you to pay me. I'm just really bored in this oil and gas thing. And uh, you guys are brilliant minds that built the internet and technology as we know it today. So if I can just be a fly on the wall, that'd be amazing. And he goes, well, we need a CEO. Do you want to be CEO? I was like, holy crap. I just went from janitor to CEO in like five <laughs> minutes. That's promotion. ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. And so I took the gig and we built a company around it and or at least we tried and we built uh, technologies that we we could um, so that individuals could prove their health credentials or their health records mm-hmm. using cryptography and QR codes. Um, and, and part of it was COVID. And part of it was, you know, how you go to the doctor and you have to fill out the same stuff yes. in, you know, 10 pages worth of forms. Um, and it's just clunky. And so we wanted to make that whole thing better, but we failed. Um, it was just too huge of a challenge for us to undertake. And so we shut down that business in the summer of 2021. 
And I had heard of NFTs earlier that year in 2021 uh, when Beeple, uh, the digital artist, uh, sold his work for $69 million as an NFT, which was ridiculous. And so I, I, I said to myself, I have to pay attention to this. And so after we wound down that business, I decided to take a break from work and really just come into the NFT space and the Web3 space out of curiosity. And so that's what I did. And I bought, I bought a bunch of NFTs. Uh, uh, most of them are worthless at this point. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of learnings and a lot of experience that, that mm-hmm. came out of that. And that led me to, to build Token Proof eventually um, in January of 2022. Awesome. Okay. So with with that being said, with all the NFTs, you know, that was, like you said, they're a big thing. A lot of things, you know, still have a lot of value. Some things just kind of bottom out, just kind of just the nature of the beast, I guess. It, do you have like that one or a few that just kind of like significant to you, whether it be the first one you bought or, hey, this one's still building value somewhere? I mean, my board ape is my profile picture everywhere, even on LinkedIn. And, you know, it's it's part of my identity now. And so I always go back to my board ape. Uh, I wasn't one of these kids that bought a board ape for one hundred and eighty dollars. I was kind of late to the game uh, uh, okay. uh, because they 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 came out in April of twenty one. I bought them in August. And so the value has definitely had gone up by then. Mm-hmm. But uh you know, it's been a great experience with them. And part of the reason of why I built Token Proof is because, because of the Bored Apes, um, mm-hmm. because they host this big festival every year called Ape Fest. And I went to the first version or the first iteration of Ape Fest in New York City in October of 21. And I noticed that. So if, if you want to attend this festival, you have to prove that you own a board ape. You have to yeah. prove that you're a member of the club, that you're one of the NFT holders, right? And so the issue is that during that first iteration, there weren't many practical tools that allow you to prove that you own an NFT in the real world. And mm-hmm. so they were they were literally using Google Sheets at the door. Um, and so it was kind of clunky. Not, it's not their fault. It's just there wasn't really anything better at that point. Yeah. Um, and so... That that gave me part of the idea to build something better. And we ended up powering ApeFest last year for them, the second iteration, which oh, awesome. was way more smooth than, than the first one. Yeah. That's awesome. So I guess now we're going to bring it to where we are at this point. So we've gotten token proof. Now you're, you're powering whole ApeFest here, which I didn't even know existed until you, we just had this conversation. So I didn't know that was a thing. I knew it was a pretty, you know like a, a club of people, basically you own those, you can pretty much do whatever you want with them. And so with that being said, your collaboration that you're going to be working on, I should say not collaborative, but partnership you're working on with Adidas. I noticed that on the superstar, is that your board ape on the superstar that will be coming out or is no. that? No, it's just something interesting about board apes is that if you buy a board ape, whether you're an individual or a company, you have exclusive and unlimited IP rights to okay. that board ape. So if you bought a board ape today, you can create a set of sneakers or a set of t-shirts or maybe a beer brand or whatever you want. You can use yeah. your board apes image commercially as you please. And so Adidas bought a board ape early on in the game mm. and now they've created a line. They actually put a name to it, which is Indigo Hertz. And um, that they branded the whole thing and they created a line, uh, an Indigo Hertz line with that ape. Ah, okay. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So with that, I guess, how does your, how does Token Proof, Adidas confirm that? What are we looking to accomplish with the two coming together? Is it more accessibility for sneakers or turning the ability to have Adidas produce NFTs and then again, turn them into physical product for individuals. What's, I guess, what's the end goal? So I, I think first we have to take a step back and, and talk about what is token proof. Mm-hmm. And so when I realized that there had to be a better way to prove that I own an NFT in the real world, mm-hmm. um, I, I decided that, well, actually, it wasn't at that time. It was after a friend of mine tweeted, hey, is anybody thinking about how to prove that I own an NFT using QR codes or something like that. And that was the light bulb moment because (laughs) if you remember, uh, we built this technology for health credentials, Mm -hmm. right? And so when my friend tweeted this, that was the light bulb moment when I go, 
oh, we already built this technology. Let's just pivot it to Web3 so that we can enable individuals to prove that they own NFTs both online and in the real world uh, in a very easy way. And so that's what token proof is for the individual today. It's a way to basically take your on-chain identity, connect your wallets to token proof, and then you can flash an animated QR code at a store that gives you a discount or maybe in order to check in at, and at an event that requires you to have an NFT. So it's called token gating, right? Which is yeah. something that requires you to have a specific NFT or a, or a combination of NFTs in order to access something, right? It could yeah. be an event, it could be a reward, it could be a live stream, it could be a discount at a store. So there's many possibilities of how this can be used, but token proof allows the, the individual to carry that um, NFT and that on-chain identity with them and then access all of these experiences both online and in the real world. Um, and so the, the Adidas partnership is very interesting to us uh, and it's been a great partnership. And really what they're doing is um, they've had exclusive sneaker drops and product drops uh, for a long time using their confirmed app I'm sure that you've used it in the past. Yeah. And so what 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 they're doing now is they launched an NFT collection after they bought their board ape. And so there's a community of people that hold these NFTs and that are starting to become very loyal to that brand, right? Adidas, yeah. um, because they own these tokens. And so what they decided to do is to um, release an exclusive limited edition product drop just for those holders of the NFTs through the yeah. confirmed app. And token proof is what uh, the community uses to link their NFTs with the confirmed app, right? So okay, now yep. they're, they're, they're gating this or, or they're offering this exclusive access to holders of the NFT collection. Okay. And that opens up a world of possibilities. Um, as you know, there's a lot of times in these sneaker drops and this high demand limited edition drops where a lot of the inventory goes not to the fans, but it goes to resellers and it goes to bots. Um, and All so the <laughs> one, one of the, yeah. And so one of the side effects of using this technology is that we can now make sure that the product and the sneakers and the hoodies mm -hmm. and everything that they release goes to the actual fans and not yeah. to the resellers and, and bots. Hey, okay. That's pretty cool. I, I mean, I never really thought of just like the merging of the two, you know, I guess products is the best, you know, way to describe them because I, I own, I think one NFT and it was something I got free through like some access I had through like DC comics. I got just one floating around in the, in the world somewhere. No idea what to do with it, uh, but it's just one of those cool things. It's just seeing how the not only technology but the ability to purchase is changing because that's that is a big thing, especially. And I know you hear it all the time. And if you're working with Adidas, just with with sneakers, it's like it's always just someone basically hoarding all of the product due to bots or you know the resellers, so on and so forth. That's really cool. Now, with that being said, do you guys have issues on the NFT side? with bots trying to purchase nfts or have you guys gotten to a place of knowing how to circumvent that that issue yeah i don't think that we run into that issue very much anymore mm -hmm. um and you know there's several ways to address the issue of that happened in the past mm -hmm. but but today i mean we're we're pretty sure of um you know that that these nfts are going to the actual fans because they're purchasing them um the the issue with nfts going to bots uh in the past has mainly been around free nfts because since since there's no payment gate um a lot of the times uh, there's bots that scoop up all of the free NFTs, but these weren't free. Yeah. And so um, we're, we're pretty sure that uh, the NFTs are held by actual humans in the community. Awesome. Okay. Good deal, man. That's pretty awesome. So now I learned a lot about NFTs and basically the confirmation of how you own them. So that was one of my big things. I always thought that if I own this digital picture, like what could stop anybody from just copying and pasting and taking you know, this image and say, oh, it's mine. So now I didn't realize there was so much data behind it and ways to, to prove it, like you mentioned, Fonz, with, you know, use your company for, you know, first and foremost example there. 
Now, with that being just such a big thing, what do you really see for the future of, I guess, NFTs, that digital product and physical product merging? Where, where do you see that kind of going, I guess, in the near future or even maybe distant future? Yeah, I think a lot of brands, and I would venture to say that the majority of brands are going to touch NFTs and Web3 in some way in the next 10 years. I think we're still in the early days, but it's an amazing technology because just like you said, there's so much data. And so the blockchain is public and your NFTs live on a blockchain, right? Mm -hmm. And so Adidas can see who owns those NFTs. But Nike or Converse can also see who owns Adidas NFTs, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is like a huge CRM that is now provided to brands to where Adidas can incentivize holders of their NFTs to participate with the brand and have more of a meaningful relationship with those fans mm -hmm. um, and, and reward those fans. And an, an example of that is giving them access to a limited edition product drop, right? Yeah. So that's that's one of the obvious ones, access to events, access to discounts. And we've done all of those with Adidas, which, mm -hmm. you know, has been great. And, and also, for example, uh, we have live apps on the Shopify app store. And so if, mm -hmm. uh, if somebody wanted to offer exclusive merch or discounts of holders of a particular NFT collection, we can power all of that. But uh, I think where it gets interesting is where we use something that I call interoperable loyalty. What, what that really means is, like I said, the blockchain is public. And so what if Nike could start targeting Adidas holders, right? Or oh, what yeah. if... Nike has NFTs as well. So what yeah. if Adidas gave a discount to everybody that held a Nike token, right? And so yeah. it's a way to incentivize uh, owners of other brands' NFT holders to participate with my brand. Mm -hmm. And 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 as brand as as fans participate with your brand, you can issue them more tokens. You don't have to sell all of these tokens. You can give yeah. free tokens, sort of like badges. Um, and so uh, there's there's so much that can be done in the loyalty uh, space where we're really fostering more meaningful relationships between the brand and the fan, and we're powering all of that for them. So, yeah, and I didn't even think about that. You like you said, it's public, so anybody can see who owns what. So that's just crazy that it just almost drives a level of competition up between all of these these brands. So like you said, between Adidas and Nike, they can really see. Oh, okay, well this person has a lot of Nike NFT. Let's go ahead and throw some coupons or some discounts there where to try to bring them to this side and vice versa. So I think that's, it changes the game a lot, especially. And it, it doesn't have to be competition, right? It could be yeah. collabs. So yeah. what if, what if Adidas partners with McDonald's tomorrow? And now um, yeah. because you own an Adidas token, you can get a free Big Mac, like, you know, or, or there, there's ways to do that. Adidas sponsors a bunch of sporting events. Yeah. And so that, that's one of the, the ways because I attended this, event um then i can get a discount somewhere right there's That's there's cool. so many yeah. ways of architecting and using the technology for for enhanced consumer loyalty that's awesome well with that you know speaking of that you know customer loyalty uh, especially again on the adidas side are there any i guess big events coming up that you're able to share with with you guys any kind of um Items, you know, again, checking to see if people own those particular tokens. Is there anything that Adidas is putting together with you guys to any events or product drops? I'm sure there's going to be more product drops. I'm sure that there's going to be more events. I don't want to speak uh, for Adidas because, you know, a lot of times they want to keep this as a, as a surprise and delight moment to uh, <laughs> their consumers. One thing I have been personally thinking about, and I have not talked to Adidas about this, but something that would be really interesting is to see some sort of RFID chip or NFC mm -hmm. tag on your sneakers mm -hmm. and incentivize people to wear these uh, products to a sporting event. So what if in, in, in the next NBA game that you go to, you're incentivized to wear your Adidas gear and you're given a free NFT by proving that you're wearing that, that gear 
by scanning that tag and checking into the event, all using token proof. It's something that we could power today. Um, and so it's something that, that would be really cool to see. And, you know, it could really change the game because suddenly you're seeing, you go, why are all of these people wearing Adidas? Why suddenly mm -hmm. am I seeing way more people wearing Adidas gear to the matches, right? Yeah. Um, and so it's another way to incentivize people to participate with your brand. Um, so, so I'll have to bring that up next time we meet with them. Yeah, so uh, something I think has probably been mentioned a few times in the sneaker space and that same uh, idea that you have, but people, it has been a big flood in the market, probably more than normal because we can see it all through social media, but counterfeit sneakers. Now, has there ever been a thought or talk of saying that same idea that uh, having the RFID tag in the sneaker so that when I buy my new Adidas, I can go ahead and scan it into my, you know, matches up with my confirmed app or my Adidas app to prove authenticity as opposed to, oh, you know what, I have a receipt or someone can just replicate a paper tag because this way someone does just happen to sell it, you know, no, they don't want to promote the reselling, but it's just kind of a, it is what it is in, in the game at this point. But that way, just like, again, the blockchain keeps track of who has what item at any point, being able to track the authenticity of a sneaker, say, oh, okay, well, Mike bought it. Uh, he sold it to Fonz, but we can see that it did come from Adidas. It was made on this day and just track the holders of it. I feel like that would be such a huge thing 100%. combating this. No, 100%. This is something that we could achieve with this technology today. And, um, you know, making sure that you're able to verify that Adidas was the real manufacturer of that shoe mm -hmm. that you bought by scanning it. And it, it could also get a little bit more interactive. And again, we can do this today where... Uh, you scan that tag and maybe because you scanned it, you suddenly get some sort of very special reward or digital yeah. uh, token, right? That allows you to an even more exclusive product drop or something like that. Um, Adidas is actually doing this today. Um, they're just airdropping as a raffle to anybody that participates with their NFTs uh, after they purchase uh, through the confirmed app. They're uh, gifting what they call a golden ticket. And, you know, this gives even more exclusive access to a future drop, things like that. And so there's a, there's a way to leverage the technology to prove the authenticity of the item, but also make mm -hmm. it even more interactive uh, for, for the user. So, yeah, I think there's really cool things coming down the pipeline. Um, and, 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 you know, you hear about the gloom and doom about crypto and blockchain and, mm -hmm. and, and the mainstream media, uh, but it's a party over here. Like, <laughs> if you're inside the space... Um, you know, you can see that the future is bright and that I can almost guarantee you that the majority of brands are going to start leveraging this technology within the next couple couple of years. Nice. Now, you said crypto. Is, is that all in the same space? Again, I, I'm pretty novice to a lot of this. So with NFTs, I know you can still track crypto on the blockchain, but is that something you can track with your, your token proof as well? Or is that crypto just kind of its own animal somewhere? Yeah, I mean, cri crypto really refers, uh, colloquially, it, it, it refers to blockchain, right? Mm -hmm. And NFTs live on the, on a blockchain. Bitcoin lives on a blockchain. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a whole world that deals with the financial side of things. The way I think about NFTs is more on the marketing and loyalty side of things. Yeah. And, and just like there are collectors of sneakers, um, you know, you might have the, the first edition of Air Jordans and mm -hmm. that holds some value that we'll appreciate over time. Same thing happens with NFTs. And so there's, there's definitely a big overlap between those two worlds. Nice. Now speaking of sneakers, so before, you know, you started working with Adidas in your life, were, were sneakers a big part of it or something you kind of maybe started easing into after starting to work with the brand a little bit? I, I am by no means a sneakerhead. Yeah. Um, though, though I've become, more understanding of the of, of, of that audience and the fans that collect a bunch of sneakers because I collect NFTs and so yeah. I can I, I totally get it now. Um, <laughs> I, I I always liked superstars, um, mm -hmm. so superstar is definitely a shoe that I've always liked. Um, you know, it reminds me of my my days in high school. Um, but I am by no means a hardcore sneakerhead. Maybe one day. Maybe that's all right. Hey, everyone starts somewhere, you know, just a little bit here and there. You start looking like, man, I have a box, uh, piles of boxes everywhere. Now what happened? What, what's, what's yours? So, man, this is uh, always a ever-changing shoe, I feel like. I mean, with Adidas, it's always been like 
well, not always, but since what, I guess 2015 and 16, the Ultra Boost of 1.0 has always been one of my go-to favorites. Um, Superstar is always one of those. Like you mentioned high school. That was one of the shoes I wore probably most in high school. And uh, still to this day, I found the right color, right you know partnership. I'll buy a pair like, was it um, two, three years ago? They did a collaboration with uh, a Bait and Ape with a camouflage uh you know, 80s version. So I bought a pair of those. I love that shoe. Just, oh, it, it's always ever changing. There's always a few of them. I can never be like, this is my definite, just number one. I can only wear this one. It's always a spectrum of things. I love it. Yeah, man. Well, well, I mean, we've talked about a lot, Funs. I mean, uh, it's so much going on there. I mean, I, again, someone coming from just, I see sneaker brands as, oh, they have sneakers, they do events. This is such a whole, like a, an injection of just, new knowledge and just new space for me personally. So I know a lot of our listeners will feel the same way because we just didn't know a lot of this existed a lot of times, still new to us. So with that, do you guys see, I guess, maybe, I guess it's kind of hard to say exclusive to uh, just the you know, blockchain purchases, but do you see them moving a lot of their, I guess, I don't want to say, I guess, Purchasing ability, do you see them moving more to that side as opposed to it seems like probably now is still more of just a percentage point, a smaller percentage point of things that are done there? Do you see them increasing that uh, that presence there over over time? I do. I do because this allows brands, not only Adidas, but any brand to create a direct relationship with their fans. And it's mm-hmm. a, it's a, a relationship that doesn't have any intermediates. So... Think about being a YouTube podcaster, right? Mm-hmm. You don't really have direct access to your fans. Yeah. If those fans were to hold one of your NFTs, that creates a direct relationship with them and a direct mm-hmm. line of communication that does not have any middlemen or intermediates. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's very important. Um, I think we're still in the early days. And so the the way I would compare it is to 1996, 1997, when the internet was starting to get adopted in the mainstream, but it was still a little bit hard. Um, You know, it was very slow. It was technical. There was friction. And so I think (laughs) in the next couple of years, we're going to make it uh, way more into the mainstream. It's going to be really easy to collect these things, sell them, because that's the other thing. If you hold NFTs, from a brand, you can resell those NFTs, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Very easily. And so you can suddenly monetize your fandom in some ways. Um, Maybe you get the Adidas golden ticket, but you don't really want it at that moment. So you can sell it to somebody else that wants it. I think that's very important. So this is all still experimental, but I think brands are waking up to the new frontier of how this technology can be leveraged. And and I think we're going to see an influx of more brands coming into the space, but also more tools that make it easier for the consumer to have this and transact with this layer of technology um, as a second thought without any friction, right? Just like today, we don't, like, I don't think we're even going to call them NFTs in the future. Just like when you visit a website, you don't, you don't say I'm, I'm using HTTP, you know, yeah. it's 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 just second nature to, mm-hmm. to us. And so I think that's that's what's going to happen in the next couple of years. And it's going to become part of our nature to transact in the mm-hmm. blockchain, because up until now, you couldn't really own something on the Internet in a decentralized yeah. way. Um, today, that's the third. That's why we call it Web3. It's because it's the third iteration or the third layer of the Internet where it's decentralized and you can own stuff mm-hmm. on the internet. That's crazy. Yeah. Cause now I feel like we're going to go into websites after a while and say, Oh, here's your, your shoe section. Here's your, you know, your NFT set, your token section, like whatever that like you just be able to do everything in one place. And it's going to be just, like you said, second nature. No one's going to even think, you know, anything different. So that's, it's crazy to be a part of like watching those things grow throughout time because I mean, I remember when people were scared to buy things on the internet in general. They're like, oh, someone's going to take my money. Now we're picking our phone up. They're like, hey, let me hurry up and buy this real quick. Now we're getting to the That's point right. of basically buying these bunches of data, calling them our own. Like, like would it be the Bored Ape or whatever these other NFTs are? And it's just 
again, quickly evolving. And again, it, it touches everything, even for the audience out here in the world of, of, of sneakers. So I think it's really cool. I love to see how things change and evolve over time. We can't stay the same. So, you know, I'm pretty excited. I still, I got to learn more about it because I'm still new to the whole uh, environment and that the NFT space, but it's something that's definitely interesting because it's going to touch everything in the future. Sounds like. It's going to be fun to watch for sure. And token proof is going to be here to power a lot of it. Nice. Hey, so man, Fonz, I appreciate the time today, sir. And you know what? I want you to be able to leave the people how to find you, how to find token proof so that way they can get in touch with you, get in touch with your company so they can keep learning more as well. For sure. Um, follow me on Twitter at Fonz GM and follow token proof www.tokenproof.xyz perfect and are those you know you have twitter are those instagram as well do you have any presence there yeah at funds gm perfect perfect all right guys so i appreciate you guys for listening and watching if you're watching on youtube as well make sure you hit the subscribe button follow funds follow token proof follow adidas and guys really do appreciate you until next time see ya